Jack Rebolt, welcome back to Players Night. Jared, Robbo. Hello, Hello Jack. You? And Toby Green is with us again in Sydney. Welcome, Toby. Hey, boys, how you going? Very well. Is he one of your favourites, Jack? One of my favourite players to watch. Loving that he's playing deep forward at the moment. Adam Kingsley's... I think he's channelling a little bit of where we played Dustin. and thought, why not stick your best player at full forward? I think he might have kicked what, eight goals in the first two weeks. So Jeremy Cameron leaves the Giants after winning a Coleman. Maybe Toby Green could win a Coleman up at the GWS Giants. What do you reckon, Robbo? <laughs> yeah, of course you can. No. Are you playing... Hang on, are you playing as a permanent forward, Toby? Yeah, I have been for a while though. Um, no, I'm just uh, just playing my role down there. We got uh, Hogs and Himmel as well, and Jake Riccardi. So um, all no, good decoys. I'm playing there, pro probably a bit closer to goal than usual. No. All right. <laughs> um, no, they're the big boys. They get to work. Eight's a good head start. All right, the tribunal first. So there's a, a, a very personal stake for the Tigers in this, and it was pretty graphic the way that it played out in the aftermath. Nathan Broads. Uh, he, he, his sense of uh, remorse and contrition was obvious. What was it sort of like in real time? In real time, you're like, oh, well, as soon as you see an action like that, you're just like, uh-oh, yeah. And, and then I think um, I had a discussion actually with Tom Dode directly out in the ground. I was like, one, who, who's the young fella? Because I didn't specifically know. He was, the, he was the player that actually came in for Wayne Malira, who was a Miller or so, who was the last, who was a late out. And then you go, that's not good. Yeah, it's not good. So I think um, the group sort of had a, a bit of a, an inkling that it was going to be a decent suspension. Even at that point of the game, you're like, yeah, but he's in trouble. Uh, and and look, credit to Broad, he's put his hand up, so he's done the wrong thing. Um, and accepted his whack and, and, and will be what it be. We saw him after the game talking to Matthew Nix. What was he like when he went in the rooms? Or what was he like at the, the next break? Uh, oh, Can you detect anything? No, look, Nathan's very, um, very matter of fact. If something's happened and it's a blue, yep, I've done it, um, and doesn't get flustered too easily. Mm. Um, and I think there's an element of, and he probably thought, well, I've got three quarters of footy now for maybe the next four to five weeks. I'm going to have a, a spell obviously from an action that I've done, I need to make the most of what I can do at this current point in time. Um, and then, yeah, he, he, obviously you, you, you front up to the tribunal tonight and cops his whack and wears it on the chin and seeks out the people to say, sh say sorry and show remorse and know that some people won't take apologies because they are hurt differently through, mm. through things and then we, we move on. It's, um, it's obviously an act that we hate seeing on an AFL football field. Um, these things happen as things happen in society. We deal with them, we learn from that them. That doesn't happen in society, does it? Worst things happen in society. No, no, no. In, in the sporting <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not making... I'm sorry, I'm not make, saying people go around sling tackling yeah. people in society, but there's actions that happen in... Mistakes in, are made. Mistakes, mistakes are made, made in society. Made. Sorry. And, and people have deal with, with the ramifications and yep. hopefully we learn from them and, and we move on. And, and the one thing that we come out of this is we hope that that, that, that young fella... Uh, Parnell, who's come into the side, is very young, doesn't have any impacts of this going forward. Because mm. it's, um, it's a really topical issue at the moment, concussion. Um, and, and whilst I'm disappointed that Brody's been suspended for a month, I'm glad to see that we're starting to roll around where we're starting to take these sort of mm. incidences really seriously. Toby, how, how dangerous are those tackles? Uh, they are getting rarer and rarer, thankfully, but when you see them, they do rather stand out. Yeah, they do, and I, I guess you know is when when you do, when you do something like that, that you, you are in trouble. And um, you know, I saw Brodie's on the replay, and um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great, and I feel sorry for the young fellow who who did get knocked out. But um, no, as a player, you are certainly aware that that's not acceptable, and you'll be in a lot of trouble if you do so. So um, no, we're all aware, and as Jack said, it is a, a highly contentious issue at the moment. So. Um, something that's high on the agenda for the AFL, I'm sure. So how mindful are you, Toby, when you lay a tackle not to take a player to ground anymore? Where's, how do you think your way through a tackle? Well, I actually had one on um, Rory Sloan last week where I, d I didn't even think anything of it. Um, I sort of had, him, had his arm pinned and brought him to the ground. I didn't... I didn't Think it was. I thought it was just a perfectly fine tackle. And then on the replay after the game, we, sh we showed it and said that um, 
this probably isn't the perfect tackle. It's, uh, it was actually a bit dangerous. He didn't hit his head or anything, but he, he could have quite easily. So it's hard when you're in the moment, I guess. It's hard to um, hard to control it. And you know, I guess if you if you do the second action, then you know you're in trouble. But um, when it's that quick movement, it's, it is hard to control. And I guess it's just something you've got to keep working on and, and um, keep identifying as something that, uh, that will be punished. Charlie Ballard has had his suspension downgraded to a fine. So um, I'm surprised. But anyway, yeah. successful appeal. I'm surprised. So he is free to play on Sunday against Geelong. It's interesting the the narrative around the and back to the tackle. I can remember sitting at this desk probably three or four years ago, and there was a tackle. I, I think it was a Port Adelaide player at the MCG, or might have been either the tackle or, or got knocked out. And the the uh, the talk around it was that oh that's that's the perfectly executed tackle. I mean pinned his arms and, and drove him to the ground. Now that is that that's where this has changed now. Like the narrative in four years or five years, yeah. whenever that tackle was, it's really changed now that we we know that we can't do that. Incidents are still gonna happen. And this isn't gonna be the last tackling incident that, that we look at and go, oh well you should know the rules. As Toby said just then things happen in the moment and sometimes you believe in action that you're doing it isn't reflective, and you look back at it on the TV, and you review it, and you go, "Gee, I was lucky that I didn't dump Rory Sloan there, or uh, I got away with one there, or maybe I just didn't think that I had him pinned as much as I did." Because players are still struggling to try and get the ball out. So ultimately, you're trying to one win a free kick and stop the opposition from getting the ball out there. So there's so many of those small little decisions you've got to make in the heat of a battle after possibly running 10, 12 kilometres in a game that, you're like, oh, and these these things will will continue to happen. We hope that they, they start to filter their way out of the game, but there's always going to be these sort of actions. You're speaking really well for a guy who laid about 10 tackles in a 15-year career. Five in round one, Robbo. <laughs> Five. Z zero on the weekend. Five. Zero on the weekend. <laughs> Five in round one. <laughs> Five. That's a career off. Oh, I know. I oh, know. Anyway, on to the Tigers. It's a massive game. Friday night. Yeah. It doesn't have to be said. You're not cherry ripe. Shorts out. Broads out. Question over Dusty. You're not going to tell if he's playing or not. We know that. I don't know, so. Oh. <laughs> I had the day off today. He just looked on the... You just lied on TV. Oh, I did. I actually <laughs> had the day off today. He lied early. He lied last <laughs> night and now you're lying tonight. What did he lie about? He said we're going to have 50 people at, the, at our taping in Adelaide for 360. He just made the number. <laughs> you just made right the number. Right. So he lied. Right. Um, that's a challenge. Yep. Straight away, that's a challenge. It is. How do you stop them with you haven't got your best 22? Oh, well, I think the, the coach has been really strong in the, the, the first part of the season and these first two weeks have been really interesting because the narrative around a lot of sides coming in off last year's results was, oh, they won't make the eight or they're no good. And even look at round one, like Brisbane go to Port Adelaide and get walloped and then Port Adelaide come here and get walloped and Brisbane go and beat Melbourne. So there's just these sort of really interesting... Um, I suppose, things that are happening in AFL at the moment, that that first month, everyone's sort of feeling each other out mm. and, and they're sort of, you're sort of testing your system against other clubs. So you want to have a challenge against the, well, well they're premiership favourites at the moment, Colin. Mm. So you want to have a bit of a challenge against them. Yes, we would love to have our team at, at, um, at Cherry Ripe and have everyone ready to go, which we won't be, but it still gives you an opportunity to play against an arch rival on a big stage in front of a big crowd and you get a chance to blood a few kids, but you get a chance to have a look at your system. Your system's going pretty well at the moment. Your, yeah. your accuracy for goal <laughs> And our system's is very similar to the team we're coming up against too. You, but you're killing yourselves with your with your scoring efficiency. Is it? You're not talking about it, I know. But it's plain to see, mate. The week, you're the weekend not was better. Kicking goals, yeah. but not good enough at this, for a team because everything else. So a lot of things in your game's going really, really well. Yeah, we went at around 50% on the weekend, which is sort of around the AFL average, so that's not too bad. But the week before was poor. Um, but that's obviously how sides defend sometimes. Like, they like to flood numbers back, and some sides like to play f uh, like an offensive seventh, style of yeah. defence. Seventh, the Jordan Dawson slid behind the ball on the weekend. So that's all part of the season, Robbo. You've got to try and work your way through it, and you've got to yep. try and keep adding things to your, your tool belt so that when you get to the point end of the season, one, you hope you've had enough wins and you're, you're in the finals, and you're ready for anything to be thrown at you. So that's the nature of an AFL season. It makes for a rather interesting training session tomorrow with Lynch, Hopper and Dusty all to prove their fitness or otherwise. Yeah, no, look, I can say Lynchy's, Lynchy's cherry ripe. He's, he's good to go. He was just a corky. But I think once you've had a hammy injury 
and you get a little knock there, you start to 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 think it'd be get a bit iffy. But um, yeah, I mean, Dustin and and, uh, and Hop will train tomorrow, hopefully, and to prove their fitness for for a big game. But it is round three, and you don't want to go risking everything because of the hype and the build up and the big game, and then sustain a longer term injury there. So that the, the smart decision will be made on those guys. So we all we all watched round one, and it was just a, a fantastic performance. Couldn't back it up in round two. Could be reasons, could be not. You're going home. You've got the, you got the blues this week. What, what's the level of confidence? Was it dropped a bit on the weekend or are you still taking a lot from round one? Yeah, well, we were disappointed with the weekend, especially the second quarter. I think West Coast kicked eight goals and, and that was the game. I think we won it three quarters out of four. Just just got smacked in the second. So it was, um, it was disappointing. We thought... Um, we thought we were a really good chance to win that game, and you know, so we, we came home. We were um, pretty flat on the way home, but that's footy, and you back up again. And six day break into Carlton, who you know, who, who I know might be one of the better sides this year, and have started all right. So um, no, we, we we're really looking forward to the challenge, and I think we'll get a few players back as well. So um, it'll be interesting to see where they're at, the Blues. What do you reckon? Could he get to 80 Sorry, goals, Jack, just playing deep in. forward? <laughs> oh, it, oh, no doubt. No doubt. And the thing is, undersized forwards are the hardest forwards to match up on. I, 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 I'm, I'm saying now, Smokey for the Coleman. <laughs> Smokey for the Coleman. Um, but, you like the sound of that? Brownlow Coleman. Can we, could, Toby, just don't get suspended for the year, all right? Brownlow <laughs> Coleman. The two weeks we've had, you've we've had two tribunal tonight. things as well, so it sort of follows you, mate. What's going on? Yeah, it's, it's never far away. Never far away. You've just got to keep it in check, mate. <laughs> uh, so to hit a season in good touch, Toby, is that uh, what's that worth to you individually? Um, oh, well, it's much better than missing the first five games, I can yes. assure you that. Um, <laughs> but no, I was... I, um, I, um, no, I, I had a really good pre-season, as did, as did most of the team. And, you know, it was a really different one as well. It was very high intensity and King has um, came in and changed just about everything. So, no, it was really enjoyable and I learned a lot along the way and learning a lot as well the first couple of weeks. You know, it, it'll take, you know, five or six weeks to, to nail exactly how we want to play our game plan. So, um, but I'm feeling good and looking forward to, yeah, keep building on it. Has uh, Toby an interesting one here for me? And Adam Kingsley, obviously a great Richmond coach who's gone up to the Jervis Giants. Has his dress sense improved? Because <laughs> he is the worst dressed man yeah. in the AFL. Yeah, I did hear that when we first recruited him. A few of the Tigers boys had mentioned that to me. But I think as head coach, he's, he might have stepped it up a little bit, put a bit more time and effort in. Um, <laughs> Spends a bit of time with the corporates now, so he's got to um, he's got to touch up a bit. So he's been a bit better, I think. Yeah, good to hear. That's good to hear. Our coaches last night felt like the bounce is probably getting towards the end of its usefulness in the game. Do you have a view, Jack? Well, I was upstairs uh, before praying in the last quarter of the North Melbourne Fremantle game that there was a sideways bounce so that we'd have a huge story here because obviously there was yes. that half a second with the siren. You the really last... are on me. There was, there was one that went sideways and we were cheering, but <laughs> play on. But, uh, no, I think, oh, look... It's happening I too much, mate. I love the nostalgia of it, but it's getting good umpires out of the game. And, and I think the bounce is actually the number one cause of injury for umpires as well. So, yes, they're leaving the game because they're retiring, but also through injury we're missing good umpires. So, it, um, yeah, no, I, I think we could, we could probably do away with it. Save the bounce or move on, Toby? Maybe just the first one of the game and then that's it. Yeah, ceremonial. Yeah. I like it. Good luck against the Blues, Toby. Great to have you with us. No worries, boys. Thanks for having me. 80,000 plus at the MCG. 90. 90. It's hard to get tickets. We'll be there. Hard we'll be tickets. there. That'll be great.